Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be making my Post World Juniors 2022 NHL Mock Draft and Top 20 Prospect Rankings. Now unfortunately, the World Juniors have come to a close after the cancellation, which means that we can now make our Post World Juniors Mock Draft and Prospect Rankings. And over the last two months, whether it be with the World Juniors or in-season play, we've seen a lot of movement from a bunch of different prospects rising and falling throughout my list, but who do I see as the best prospects right now as we go into the year of 2022, and which prospects for the 2022 NHL Draft make today's top 20? Watch till the end for the entire rankings and for the entire mock draft, and hit that subscribe button if you are new. 55% of the people that are watching are not subscribed. If you like cocky and if you like prospects, this channel is the place to be. Now with the World Juniors coming to a close, I'll also likely do a mock draft simulation where I go through every team and see who I think they'd pick, but for today, I want to do rankings since I haven't really done them in a month and a half, and there has been a lot that's been changing in my top 20. Now a good example of that is the 20th overall spot here, a player that I'm a pretty big fan of, and a player that was a part of the Slovakian team in the World Juniors this year, in Philip Mazar, a winger who, in at age 17, has played in the main Slovakian league so far this year, getting 20 games played under him with five goals, four assists, and nine points. He was part of the Slovakian team, but in two games, got zero points, and in my opinion, wasn't really all too effective with another Slovakian player that we'll talk about later on, but I still thought he was fine, and in the main Slovakian league against some great men professional competition, I thought he was using his size and skill extraordinarily well, and I think he could become a very solid and versatile top six winger in the future. Now going on to another winger here, next up, 19th on my board, and the 19th best prospect in the 2022 NHL Draft. Next up, I have from the USDP, Isaac Howard. A guy that I'm a pretty big fan of, and so far this year, he's done great in that department. So far this season, in terms of points, in 27 games, has 12 goals, 22 assists, and 34 points on the board. When it comes to his passing and overall playmaking ability, I'm a huge fan of what he's able to bring on a consistent basis, but his intensity, his skating is all at a high level, and I think will also translate pretty well in the NHL if you give him a couple years to truly develop. But now moving on to number 18 and my 18th best prospect for this upcoming NHL draft. I'm going to go again to the USDP and go for another winger here in Cutter Gauthier. One of the best names in the entire draft, bar none. And this guy is absolutely deserving of this spot. Has been kind of on the fringe of my rankings for a while and has finally made the top 20 for very good reason. The 6'2 left winger so far in 27 USDP games has 16 goals, 11 assists for 27 points. But he's a very balanced offensive mind who the mind is definitely a big part of things. His IQ is spectacular. His position is uh, positioning is very consistent as well. And in the offensive zone, he just knows what to do at all times, which leads his great shot and great overall abilities into great positions. He's a guy that I think is going to be very versatile, very solid in the NHL someday. And again, will be around that middle six winger range in the NHL. Now going on to the next team, our next player here at number 17. You know what? Let's just go on to another USDP player here because they're looking pretty good in this range. And the next one I have here is a centerman who I believe is one of the more underrated prospects of this draft in Rucker Begrody. Another fantastic name from the Americans, of course. But he's a guy that slipped for a lot of people, and yes, has slipped for me since comparing in the last year, but this is still a player that I have very high hopes for, and even though his ceiling isn't the strongest, I feel like he has a lot of great traits that do improve, us or have improved so far this year. In 21 USDP games, he has 12 goals, 14 assists for 26 points. When it comes to the goal scoring ability, the physical ability, his overall positioning. He's fantastic. The only thing that holds him back, though, is just a real lack of great skating and explosiveness in his game. That's the main thing, I think, holding him back, but if the right team is able to get him, I think he could be a great potential top six player in the future. Now, again, I don't know how this is happening, but we now move on to another USDP player. I think they've kind of just grouped them all together somehow, but when it comes to this player, this is another guy that's entered my top 20, but the more and more I watch him, the more I kind of fall in love with what he's bringing to the table. Next up, at number 16 in my board, I have Frank Nazar. Frank Nazar of the USDP is a very interesting prospect to me personally. He's a guy that's been really explosive in the USDP so far this year as a center slash right winger at age 17. So far this season, in 27 games, he has 11 goals, 18 assists for 29 points. Now, those stats might not jump out at you, but his play driving ability, his skating, his explosiveness is simply one of the, one of the best in this draft. 
draft and I feel like with him he has a really solid blueprint to make the NHL and to be a consistent player there. Now he's not exactly the biggest player at 5 foot 10 but I feel like his skating is sh and his shiftiness is good enough to where he can survive on his, on his own and I feel like with his offensive skills what he has on top of that skating is really really valuable. Next up we're going to go to finally a player outside of the USDP. A player that I'm a pretty big fan of and I think is one of the best prospects and defensemen of this NHL draft. Next up we're going to go to the OHL and for my 15th spot my 15th best prospect in this draft I'm going to go to the Canadian side of things and go with Ty Nelson. A player that in terms of potential I really do think has some massive uh, potential in the NHL level. At 5 foot 10 he is on the smaller side but he's the type of smaller defenseman that I think can really work at the NHL level too. He's a guy that so far in the OHL this season in 29 games has 5 goals 20 assists for 25 points. I think when it comes to Nelson his offensive production his offensive mind is simply brilliant and he's a guy that in terms of skating in terms of of compassion has so much on the ice he's a hard worker he knows how to play the game right and I feel like when it comes to Nelson he'll be a very very great professional player he's a guy that I could see getting a middle pair spot potential in a power play someday and just being a consistent top four defenseman that you can depend upon for great production and great offensive results but now moving on to number 14 I'm gonna move on to another defenseman here on this list this time coming from Sweden though and next up I have Elias Salyamonson. Now Salyamonson unfortunately was not part of the World Juniors team not like he would have played too much but when it comes to Salyamonson he's a guy that I've kind of been up on uh, up and down on because his skating is sensational and he's a guy that in terms of potential I think has so much to offer but I feel like there's some just little things that hold him back. Personally I don't really see a lot of physicality in his game nor a lot of comfort going against stronger competition mainly in the SHL. That is a little bit of a problem for me, especially when it comes to defensemen. You can kind of get away with it, I guess, a little bit if you're a winger, perhaps, but when you're a guy like Sally Monson, who's going to be needed to step it up in a big-time role, potentially in the SHL this next year, that kind of is a little bit worrying to me, but I feel like when it comes to the skating, when it comes to the offensive mind, there's a lot to work with here, and I still think he could become a really solid defenseman if you're able to truly unlock his talent. Now, we're going to go on to another Swedish player here at number 13. This is a guy that I have pretty high hopes for in terms of being a potential middle six, potentially second line player in the NHL someday. A guy that I think in terms of playmaking, in terms of raw talent, just has so much work going for him. Next up at number 13, I'm going to go for Swedish winger Noah Ostland. Now to me, Noah Ostland is a guy that's going to have a huge role on Sweden in the World Juniors if they do happen over these next couple of years. He's a guy that I have some pretty big high hopes for in terms of playmaking, in terms of vision, in terms of great puck handling ability. All of those traits are fantastic when it comes to him. And he even though, again, he is on the smaller side and could stand to use some more uh, minutes and more experience against men, he's a guy that, if you are patient with, I feel like over the next few years could pay uh, pay dividends, especially in the top 15. But now moving on to number 12, we're going to move on to a guy that's a pretty different case than Noah Osland, a guy that's almost completely different. Next up in Connor Geeky, who's playing in the WHL, the Winnipeg Ice Scent, is a guy that on paper has so much potential, big size, has made some big highlights in the past, looks fantastic. The problem is he doesn't use his physicality and his size too much. He feels like a 5 foot 10 player out there sometimes. Not really using his physicality as much as he should. As well as offensively, I don't think he uses his body nearly as effectively as he can. And although the, the skill and the hands for a guy that big is great and the skating's pretty solid for him, I feel like the direction of his game isn't as effective as it could be. But under the right coaching and under the right potential, I think he could do very, very well, which is why he's inside this top 15. But now going on to one of the people and one of the players that have, one of the people, one of the players that has risen the most throughout the last month and a half for me, we're going to go on to number 11 and move on to USA defenseman Seamus Casey. Now, I've watched a lot more of Seamus Casey recently compared to the start of the season, and man, he is one of the most fun players to watch in this entire NHL draft. Now, I do see some people out there putting him inside the top 10. I don't quite see that yet, but he's a guy that in terms of skating, in terms of vision, in terms of impeccable offensive consistency, this is a guy that has pretty much everything going for him. The problem is defensively, sometimes there could be some shifts where he's kind of out-muscled or uh, just doesn't, isn't really in the right position 
positions, but offensively in terms of transitions, in terms of skating, in terms of really everything, there's so much going for him. And I really feel like if he's in the right system and you give him patience, this is a guy that could be a great power play quarterback someday. Now we're going to move on to number 10 and move on to yet another defenseman here inside the top 20. Next up, we're going to go to a guy that unfortunately had his World Juniors cut short, even shorter than some of the other prospects here, coming from the Czech Republic in David Juracek. Now, David Juracek is a guy that I've seen kind of all over the place when it comes to rankings. I have seen him even inside the top three for some people, and I do like Juracek a lot. Not that much, but I do feel like with Juracek, there's a great foundation there in terms of stability, in terms of skating, in terms of great fundamental IQ. There's a lot that's going for him in that way, especially defensively. I feel like in his own zone, he's a super smart player and consistent at that, playing well in the main Czech League, and I feel like that will transition if you give him some time into the NHL someday. But now, since we're officially inside the top 10, we can now go on to number 9 and move on to a player that's dropped a lot for me. I had him third overall in my last rankings, but admittedly, I wasn't watching as much of him at the start of the season as I probably should have, and I've watched a lot more of him since. He's a guy that's kind of been all over the place. Next up, though, at number 9, I have Ivan Miroshenko. Now, I had him third overall last time, and I don't have him nearly as high now, but I do still think there's a lot going for him, even if this year hasn't really been all that great for him. I still think that shot is fantastic. I, think, I still think he's going to be one of the best power play players of this entire draft. I like his offensive mind uh, still, and I still think overall there's a lot of physicality that could be brought from his style of play. I still think he's a pretty solid player, but definitely not top three worthy any longer, even if I still think he'll be good after this season. Now we're going to go on to number eight and go on to actually another Russian winger, a guy that right now I guess I see as better kind of interestingly enough, I'm going to move on to number eight, move on to Danili Yurov. Now, Yurov was invited to Russia's team, unlike Miro Shashchenko, which I find is pretty interesting, and I would say Yurov's definitely having the much better year, but at the same time, he also hasn't given that many minutes in the KHL this season, unfortunately, but in the World Juniors for both teams, both games with Russia, I thought he was pretty effective, was pretty strong against his peers, but in general, I feel like with Yurov, there's just so much great offensive potential that's bursting from his, from his is just from his from his from his hands there's so much there that I think would be so fun to see if you just give him some more minutes in the KHL I feel like he's just bound to explode his offensive production over the years has been fantastic and I feel like this is the guy that just knows how to score knows how to set up other players as well on a pretty alarming level now going on to number seven we're gonna go to one of the most controversial players of this entire draft at number seven and number seven I'm gonna have to go with finish winger Joaquin Kamel now I know some people are having him inside the top three even inside the top two. For me, I don't quite see that hype, and I feel like a lot of my concerns were kind of exposed in the World Juniors this year. He's a guy that, in terms of goal scoring, I think is great, and against men has obviously proved himself quite well, but I feel like some of the goals he scored in the league have been a little bit lucky, and I feel like for him, it's definitely been boosted by his great goal scoring knack, and the luck has gone his way. In the World Juniors, it wasn't quite like that, and he it kind of felt like he was the guy on his line driving play the least, and even on the power play, it didn't seem like Finland gave too much confidence in him either. So we'll see what happens with Kamel throughout the rest of this season, but I do think he's just a tad overhyped as of right now. But now we get into the top six, and this is where we start to get into the truly elite prospects of this draft, and a great example of that eliteness comes in at number six and comes in the form of USA centerman Logan Cooley. Now, Logan Cooley is a guy that's been slowly rising up my rankings over the last few months, and deservedly so. He's been fantastic in the USDP, and was, was also really, really good for the US and the World Juniors when they did play. Unfortunately, it was only one game, I'm pretty sure, but he was on the second line and was pretty great in that game overall, having a lot of great chances, and using his amazing skating and vision to truly elevate his teammates, which is what I was seeing as the biggest strengths throughout the USDP this year. He's a guy that finds just a little bit of space and uses the most of it, kind of like a little bit of Jack Hughes in his draft year as well, but this is a guy that I think has a lot of great traits and will be one of the best skating offensive players of this draft. Now going inside the top five, we're going to go to one of my favorite prospects of this draft. You guys know I've talked about him a lot on this channel, but next up we're going to go into Slovakian winger Uri Slavkos. Now, he didn't have any production points in the World Juniors this year, sadly, zero points in two games, but I do think Slavkowski had a lot of great opportunities and was definitely one of the Slovakia's best overall play drivers and chance creators throughout those two games. I thought he was perfectly acceptable, even if he wasn't truly elite, but in, Slova in, the, Le in the Liga so far this year, or in Finland rather, I think he's been great at the U20 level and the Liga as well, really just playing fantastic against men, but that goes back to the physicality, the great 
great hands and the great offensive potential that he has. Now going on to number four, we're going to go into, in my opinion, the best defenseman of this draft and my favorite defenseman of this draft, a guy that a lot of people are slowly starting to realize is as good as he is in Simone de Metz. Now, Simone de Metz was a part of Slovakia's team, obviously, in the World Juniors this year, and I thought that second game was fantastic from him against Sweden. He was really all over the ice and was dependent upon to just strengthen the team, and he definitely did. But in Slovakia this year, I think he's been super impressive, super consistent, and at a mature level has brought so much good offensive traits, some amazing skating, some great IQ, and just a lot of great subtle quality that I think make him into a future top four defenseman, potentially top pair guys as well. But he's already great against men, and I feel like even though he will need some patience, he could be in the NHL in a couple years' time and do pretty well for himself. Now we're going to go inside the top three, and when I say this top three has gotten really interesting as of late, I truly do mean it, because we've seen a lot happen over the last really week at this point. But going into number three, going to a guy that many people were starting to doubt and was great at this year's World Juniors, and we're going to go on to Brad Lambert's. Now, I want to say something right now. With Brad Lambert, obviously his league of season has not been amazing, but I feel like some of that production that's been disappointing has come from the lackluster teammates, the horrible luck. He's been play driving pretty great in the league this year, has gotten a lot of chances. Again, kind of reminds me of Radu in his draft year, but I think Brad, Brad Lambert's going to be way better than Radu will be, and I feel like this World Juniors, he was showing exactly what he could do, the chemistry he can have with the right teammates, the production he can have too. I feel like he's going to explode eventually whether it be in the second half of this year or next year. Either way, I think he's going to be fantastic and will be worth a top three pick. Now going inside the top two, we're going to get into some even more com interesting conversations because uh, the protected first overall pick wasn't exactly electric in this year's World Juniors. But in saying that, at number two, I'm still going to go with Canadian centerman Matthew Savoy. Now, to me, Matthew Savoy might be one of the most underrated prospects of this draft. Anybody that has him outside the top three, I think, is just giving this guy not enough credit that he should. He has been the one of the best players in the entire CHL this year, leading the WHL in scoring last time I checked, and just being a dominant force for the Winnipeg Ice in terms of skating, in terms of great puck handling, in terms of making everything out of just a little bit of space. Matthew Savoy is truly prolific, and I feel like with him, he is one of the most skilled, one of the most talented pro prospects really over the last couple of years. He's a guy that has so much potential brimming within him, and if you're able to unlock that full package, you got something truly special with him. Now, talking about special, we can now move on to the first overall spot here. In my opinion, still the best prospect of this NHL draft. Certainly wasn't great in this year's World Juniors on top of not having a stellar OHL season up to this point, but I still have him at number one, and at number one, I'm going to go with Canadian centerman Shane Wright. Now, there's a lot of people out there that are starting to actually consider Shane Wright not being the number one prospect in this draft. And personally, for me, the more I think about it, the more I think that with Wright and Savoy, I think those two guys might be as even as they've ever been. To me, with Savoy, there are some big strengths in terms of offensive potential, but with Wright, he's way more of a complete player and defensively is the best prospect, I think, of this draft. So you have some pros and cons with both of them. I go with Shane Wright more because I think he's the more NHL-ready player, because I think he's the more NHL- projectable player as well, and still has some amazing traits with his shot, with his skating that will translate quite well. I still have him number one, but at this rate, Shane Wright's progress and draft stock has been slipping, and it'll be really interesting to see what he's able to do in the OHL these next couple of years, especially since he was such uh, was on such a hot streak with Kingston over the last couple of weeks. We'll see what happens, but as of right now, I still have Shane Wright at number one. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Comment down below what do you guys think of my rankings, what do you agree and disagree with, and who do you guys see as the best prospects in the 2022 draft. Share this video with your friends, get it out there, and click on this card for all my 2022 draft content right on one playlist. My name is Nathan. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.